Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stephen Breach coming to you here today. Uh, I got to work a little bit early, so I decided to make a uh, video um, talking about the upcoming uh, segment that's going to be held on the WWE Payback uh, pay-per-view. Uh, basically, Vince McMahon has been put on the spot, and Vince McMahon is going to have to make a decision about who is going to be running Monday Night Raw. Uh, honestly, in the last month, it seems like it's been a little bit wishy-washy. Uh, the Raw after WrestleMania, Vince put Shane in charge uh, with no real set time of how long he was going to be running Raw. It almost sounded like he was going to run Raw that one night, and then all of a sudden, the next Monday, uh, around noon, uh, WWE tweeted out that due to overwhelming uh, social media responses uh, over uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook of fans saying that they wanted to see Shane, even though Shane lost at WrestleMania to The Undertaker, which, as of right now, is been put so far on the back burner that uh, it's almost like WWE is trying to make you not remember that that match happened, is that Shane has been running Raw week in and week out, even though he hasn't really had that much of a presence. He did uh, come up with a tag team tournament. He did... Um, uh, make it uh, available for some NXT stars to have debuts on the main roster, that being the Vaude Villains, Apollo Crews, um, uh, Kaz and Enzo, and uh, I feel like there was another debut of somebody else that's slipping through the, the, the cracks right now. And I, I think as of right now, everyone is still waiting for the main debut of Finn Balor. And for the longest time, if you've been watching my videos since WrestleMania, I know there's not been as many uh, as there's been in the past. And honestly, there's not going to be as many as there's been in the past. Um, I'm really not going to make videos uh, from home anymore. I'll, I'll make videos um, basically when, when I get to work early or basically when uh, I'm at work and I have a break or I have lunch. Uh, I'm not going to be making videos on every headline from down to bottom. I'm just to the point where I'm burned out. And I, I don't know what the future is going to be. But when there is something that I really want to talk about, this is my outlet. Because basically I don't have anybody else to talk to um, about this sort of stuff. The guy that I went to WrestleMania 31 with, Archie, he doesn't work at my work anymore. Um, so I basically have no one to talk to at work. And uh, that's just about it. <laughs> so um, I've been talking uh, about uh, the fact that uh, it, it looks like Finn Balor is going to be coming to Monday Night Raw. If not, WWE has really been messing with us. Finn Balor, since January 3rd, February, January 4th, has been making pictures, has been making tweets, um, really you know, pointing to the fact that the Bullet Club is coming to WWE. A few weeks ago, we had uh, Machine Gun Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows uh, debut on the main roster. We saw them have their debut match on Monday on Raw. A little bit more of a competitive match uh, than I was thinking it was going to be, but the Usos, even though they're not the tag team champions, and who is the tag team champions? The New Day. The Usos are probably one of the best tag teams in the WWE. They're a two-time Slammy winner. Last year, they won the Slammy for best tag team, even though they were injured for more than half of the half of the year. I mean, they, they got injured around WrestleMania, and I don't even think they made the return until December. Um, so they really only wrestled, you know, January, February, March, and December, and they were still able to win the Slammy for best tag team, which was kind of robbing a lot of other teams, like the New Day. Um, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd both came down injured, but they had a great run before they did get injured. So um, everything um, sort of got pushed back, but. Uh, Machine Gun Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, I think that they're going to be running the tab team division for a good little while. I could see them picking up the belt sooner than later uh, and just sort of being that one team that, you know, they, they will lose the title someday. It wasn't like a New Japan, they held the titles the whole time. They, they would win them, they would lose them. You know, sort of not to be... They, they were dominant over the tag team division, but they had bad nights and they had bad days where, you know, they screwed up, they were heels, and it was what it was. Sometimes the baby faces got to win. But I don't know, when I look at this whole deal, you know, Shane and Stephanie uh, both being in the ring um, with Vince and Vince having to make a decision over what he wants to do um, with Raw, I don't understand what Shane has done that hasn't been good for business. Yes, the Raw rating, which Shane McMahon did bring up when he debuted, has gone down each week since WrestleMania. WWE even though it gets heated up around WrestleMania, is not as popular as a lot of people like me like to think it is. 
Um, definitely, there are a lot of fans out there, but I think there's other ways of watching Raw, whether if it's a way that they don't get a rating point, uh, whether if it's someone on the West Coast that's not available to an East Coast stream uh, and watching it online on the internet, or whether if it's somebody watching on Hulu. Obviously, Hulu pays for the rerun of Monday Night Raw, even though it's edited down to 90 minutes. So somebody must be watching it. Hulu must feel that somebody does sign up for their product in order to do it. So they're not watching that way. Maybe they watch the YouTube clips. Maybe they just watch the, uh, the like Ravi does, the top 10 things that you missed on Monday Night Raw that WWE uploads on Tuesday morning. Uh, maybe they, uh, they're they just watching that to keep up with the product, but they don't really have three hours to divulge to the product. So honestly, in my mind, how much I love Stephanie, and I think that Stephanie is a better promo to have on Monday Night Raw, whether if it's her sort of running somebody down or her complaining about not getting what she wants, um, and being a huge Triple H fan. And anytime Triple H is in the scene, I get more excited. Um, whether if it's me thinking that they're building up to a match, which is going to be few and far between. Triple H isn't going to wrestle on every pay-per-view. Triple H isn't going to wrestle on every special. He's not going to wrestle on every Raw. He's going to pick his spots to where they really mean something. Um, basically, when he moved into the position that he was and he was not an everyday wrestler, he's going to be wrestling to the about the extent of how much Vince McMahon wrestled when Vince would wrestle because he knew that it was a big deal when he would get in the ring. And Triple H, even though he won the Rumble, he won the championship, he's going to face the facts. People want to see him get his ass kicked. Even though he had a ton of fans and people cheered for him at WrestleMania, it was the Roman Reigns era. What, what happens from here... Um, I, I think Roman Reigns has been a little bit more fun as, as this heelish sort of a character, um, but it's not all the way heel. It's just sort of. It's like a, a whole bunch of stages of gray. Um, we'll see where we go from there. But I think that when Vince makes his decision, I think he's going to be picking um, basically that Shane is going to be in charge of Monday Night Raw for the foreseeable future. And this sets up the main event of basically... Stephanie and, and Triple H. Is Triple H not in the segment, which doesn't make sense to me. I guess that everybody knows that if Stephanie's in charge, Triple H is going to be right there with her um, since he is his husband. I don't know if there's bad blood between Triple H and Shane uh, because of the way things went down. I wouldn't think there was. I mean, you got to believe that in wrestling world that, that maybe they do. But, I mean, this is a family. And, I mean, you can believe that the stuff that we see on USA for years since around... Um, you know, WrestleMania 16 with a big man in every corner and things like that, that these guys don't like each other. But, you know, they've had Christmases, they've had Easter's, um, they've had family gatherings, they've had Thanksgivings. I'm sure that, you know, these guys can sit around a table and have fun. Maybe when it comes down to business, it's a little bit different, but I'm sure they're a family and they love each other and, uh, you know, they're only stronger when they're all there. But, um, I don't know why they're keeping it separated, but maybe this is when Triple H and Stephanie try to sort of stick a wrench into Shane's plans, basically trying to show Vince, hey, he can't do it, he can't get it done. When we were in charge, you know, we were running the ship and, and we were going downstream and everything was going the way that we wanted to. Now with Shane in charge, you know, you've got uh, no main event, uh, you've got wrestlers who don't want to wrestle. I don't want to bring up the whole deal from around 2011 where everyone walked out on Triple H and they had that Monday Night Raw open where basically it was just CM Punk, uh, Sheamus, Big Show, John Cena. I think there was like four, maybe five guys to cross the picket line. And then basically all the other wrestlers were in the parking lot. And then John Laronitis came down and basically said that the board had decided to strip uh, Triple H of his powers, uh, that they can't have a show without the wrestlers. He brought the wrestlers in out of the parking lot, and John Laronitis was put in charge. And then basically, as the wrestlers were coming in, and as Triple H was going out, we had wrestlers coming up complaining to John Morrison. I'm, I'm sorry, John Morrison came up to John Laronitis complaining about him being in charge. If you didn't want him to be in charge, why the hell didn't you stay out in the parking lot? Uh, it doesn't make sense to walk out on Triple H and then a heel gets put in charge and now you're upset, but you're still coming in and you're going to wrestle. I don't want something like that, but basically, you know, a move into the right direction would be 
you know, the Valor Club, Bullet Club, whatever you want to call it, coming in and destroying the main event, whether if you think they're with AJ, whether if you think they're with Roman, I don't think they're with either. I think that they are friends with AJ and they would want AJ to be a part of it. It's going to be a lot like the NWO where it was a three-man group and there were people in the company that had that were friends with Hogan, they were friends with Hall, they were friends with Nash, like DDP, and maybe they'll want them to join, but they're not going to join and they're going to be on different sides. I'm sure AJ and and uh, Luke Gallows and, and Machine Gun Carl Anderson can all respect each other. And just basically AJ's going to say, as long as you don't mess with me, I won't mess with you. And we can go in our own separate directions. And, you know, basically, even though we're having a Monday Night Raw segment on the pay-per-view, I wouldn't be surprised if we have another segment, just like the segment that we're having on pay-per-view, where we're all going to be looking at our televisions, we're all going to be looking at our computer screens, basically saying, didn't we just go through this last night and now we're going through it again? It's almost like it doesn't really make sense. But that that's what I see going down. I see Shane being put in charge at the pay-per-view and then basically Triple H and Stephanie, since they're going to be making their on-screen return since WrestleMania, they've been gone for about a month, um, trying to get over Triple H's uh, loss and then Shane being put in charge of a company, or at least being put in charge of Monday Night Raw, and then, you know, the authority trying to regain their control, and then building up to whether if it's going to be a match at Extreme Rules, whether if they're going to delay it all the way out to SummerSlam, Shane versus Triple H, and then we'll see where this is going. We still don't know what is up with Shane. Is he basically just like Eric Bischoff when Eric Bischoff came to the company? Even though he has a lot of brains in the wrestling business, even though he did a lot of booking for WCW, um... They didn't want him for the creative team. They didn't want him on the creative staff. Um, and Eric Bischoff shoot interview uh, basically said really early into his WWE run, he went to Vince, he went to creative, he gave them a few ideas, they didn't use them, and he took that as, that's not what I'm here for, I'm just here to be a character, and that's what I'm going to be from here on out. And he never went back to him. So I don't know if Shane is pitching creative ideas, or if Shane is just flying in for Monday Night Raw and then going back to his normal life on Tuesday and running that, you know, pay-per-view company as a CEO of uh, trying to get pay-per-view going in Japan. So, or no, China, sorry. But uh, we'll see um, what's going down. But uh, as of right now, my vote is that Vince is going to put Shane in charge of Monday Night Raw.